Hey everybody, welcome to another tutorial for the wonderful Elementor page builder in WordPress and today I'm going to show you a simple CSS hack that allows you to create slide out boxes that can be applied to any type of content. So let's quickly get on with it and jump to the back end and see how we do this. First things first, we create a nested section by dragging the columns into the actual section and we're going to style the background very very quickly and give it some top and bottom padding and we're going to apply a background image so we've got something to look at. So let's go with the grass and let's just quickly center center, remove the repeat and set it to cover. So that's all we need to do with the background section. What we can see within this section is it creates a column and inside that there's a nested section. So this column is going to be important at some point to create a zone for detecting hover. But to start with, we're going to get on with the inner nested section. And the first thing we're going to do is to delete the column within that that we don't need. And then we're going to apply some style to that section. So let's give it some padding all round. And let's give it a background color. And let's just smooth off those edges a bit by giving it a bit of border radius. And there we go, we've got our first section. So let's start populating with a title and some text and let's just make sure that's in the box and let's duplicate some of that content to make it one thing so there we have our first section very simple and the second thing we'll do is make a duplicate of that so we can cut down on redoing styles let's make a couple of simple changes so as we can detect something different let's even add a button why not so here we go we've now got our two sections so Basically nothing's changed as of yet. This is just a basic template. You can load it with whatever you'd like. So now we have to apply some CSS classes that we can then style using a bit of custom CSS. So the first area is this outer column. We basically want this to be the area that we that detects the, ha the mouse hover. So let's go into that, go to advanced and give it a class. Now I prefix all of my classes with my initials so as I know it's mine and it reduces the chance that it will conflict with a similar name class that's already in another style sheet. So it's a good practice to follow and the first one we're going to do is we're going to call it DB Hoverbox because that's going to be the area that's going to detect the mouse. The next one is we go to the first of the two nested sections and we're going to give that a class and because this is the one that scales out when we go over the top of it, we're going to call it DB Hover Scale. And last but not least, we'll go to the third section, which is going to slide out. And yes, let's name that one DB Hover Slide Out. Now, I will put some of this in there into the YouTube comments, but we've got to make sure these are written correctly because they the CSS you know doesn't mess around. If it's not spelled correctly, it won't work. So there we go, we've got our three sections, uh, sorry, our column with our two sections named accordingly. So let's save that. Now we've got choices of where we apply CSS. We can do it within the column or the section by going to the advanced area and putting in the custom CSS. We can go to the page settings and you'll find hiding behind style. We've also got custom CSS, but the best place to put it, because we might want to apply this globally across our site, so anywhere can have this effect, we're going to put it into the theme using the customizer. So let's quickly jump and view the page, and what we see is no movement whatsoever, and let's hit the customize button. Now, since WordPress 4.7, you'll find additional CSS was added to the customizer as standard. Now, it's you can use that, it's fine, but I don't currently use it, hence the reason why you can see Simple CSS, which is a plugin from the brilliant Tom Osborne, which does the same thing in the customizer, but just gives me a little bit more control over my code. So I'm going to paste in from my clipboard this basic code, and immediately we can see an effect. Now, we haven't finished yet, because you can see the bottom section is hovering over the top section, which we'll fix in a minute with adjustments to Z index. But let's quickly have a look at the code and get a little bit of understanding of what it's doing. So the first piece of code is identifying that the hover scale and the hover slide out, separated by a comma, will now both receive the next property. And this property is just basically going to say, how long should I take between transitions of something? So something's moving, something's scaling. It's basically going to apply the transition to any of those effects. 
it's going to do it over a 0.35 or a second it's going to be a little bit smoother with an ease and out function so it doesn't just snap hard it smoothly reaches a point and comes back again and it has to have the hyphen uh, sorry the exclamation important afterwards because there's already a piece of code in elementor that's using the same property so that just makes sure it overrides it in this instance the next piece of class is where we detect the dv hover box is being hovered upon and what happens when you hover on that apply the following properties to the db hover scale which just does a two percent scale and applies the box shadow to it and the reason why we're adding the box shadow here rather than elemental is because the box shadow hover effect will only apply when you hover over that section whereas this will apply when you hover over the outer box now finally we have the db hover box hover again but this time it's a not hover state so this says what's going to happen to db hover slide out when you're not hovering on it and this particular piece of code just says i want to translate the position the zero which would be the x-axis says don't move me horizontally and the minus 100 percent is the y-axis which basically says move me up so that's our basic bit of css in there and you can see it's already working it's nothing complicated so let's just save that and let's then go back to the actual Elementor editor to fix our Z index issue. So again, we're going to select the top section, we're going to go to advanced, and we're going to give this a higher Z index of one. They all do it default to zero. So therefore, we now have this section sitting on top of the other, and the other one's hidden until you scroll over the top. Now, added point here, the reason why the CSS was added in the customizer, because now when I tried to grab hold of the section UI, of the bottom section it's very very difficult not impossible but it can be complicated so at least you can go back to the customizer and comment out or remove that css so you can carry on editing normally so let's just quickly run to the front end and see if everything's worked accordingly and then i can let you get on and have a play with this so i'm hoping this gave you a bit of inspiration hopefully it taught you a little bit about how css and elementor you know the two combined i mean element is brilliant but with a bit of CSS, you can make it your own and make it extra brilliant. So that's all from me. Until next time.